So there's like 30,000 dietary supplements in the United States alone. How do you know which supplements you should be avoiding? Let's talk about this. So I want to give you my list of several supplements that I think you should run from. You can buy these by themselves, and they're also found in a variety of dietary supplements as ingredients. And the first class of dietary supplements that I'll bring to your attention are these male performance enhancing supplements. No, I'm not talking sports performance here. I'm talking about uh, performance, say, south of the border, gentlemen. I'm not a big fan of these things because when I look at those products, I see a lot of the same ingredients in different bottles. That tells me right off the bat that there's not a lot of original thinking in the male performance supplement arena. But the main reason I would suggest you putting them back is that there have been an awful lot of recalls of male performance supplements over the last several years. I've lost count, it's been so many years. Why are they getting recalled by the Food and Drug Administration? Well, it's because when they do get inspected by the FDA, the FDA finds that they contain things that are not listed on the label. I'm talking about medications to treat erectile dysfunction, such as Viagra, Cialis, and molecules that look like these medications. It's a big no no in the United States to put drugs in dietary supplements. You can't do that. So when the FDA finds them, they make the company issue a voluntary recall. This has actually happened more times than I can count. And because of that, I would consider throwing the entire class of supplements under the bus. I'm sure there are some really good companies in this business. However, they're being pulled down by all the bad apples in this industry. And because of all the recalls, I just don't trust any of them. The next supplement I would bring to your attention is called Garcinia Cambogia. Garcinia Cambogia, also known as hydroxycitric acid or HCA. It can be known by any of those names on a supplement facts label. This is a very popular weight loss supplement. I'm not a fan of Garcinia Cambogia because when I looked at at the research on Garcinia Cambogia, I found just as many studies showing it might work as might not work, and the dosages used in those studies were very close to each other. So how did different studies using similar doses come to different conclusions? That tells me that there's probably a problem with the Garcinia Cambogia weight loss research. But the main reason I don't like Garcinia Cambogia is because there have been several instances of people having liver problems while taking Garcinia Cambogia supplements. Nobody's really sure why liver problems are popping up with Garcinia Cambogia. And to be fair, a lot of the reports do stem from people taking multi-ingredient dietary supplements, of which Garcinia Cambogia is one of those ingredients. However, I've seen at least one report of an individual needing a liver transplant and Garcinia Cambogia was the only thing that person was taking. I do think liver problems are rare with Garcinia Cambogia, but the liver is really important, so anything that messes with that is gonna put it on my no-fly list. I'm also not a fan of green tea supplements, which again, I know is very popular in weight loss supplements. Why don't I like green tea? The same reason I don't like Garcinia Cambogia. There have been several instances of liver problems in people while they're taking green tea supplements. Again, we're not really sure why green tea might be linked to liver problems and why in other people it doesn't cause liver problems but it's pretty serious anything that messes with the liver. I will point out that drinking green tea is fine and green tea itself actually has a lot of health benefits. So I would suggest you drink the green tea, but leave the green tea supplements alone. I'm not a fan of another dietary supplement called Tribulus terrestis. Tribulus terrestis is an herbal ingredient and I find it in not only male performance supplements, but also testosterone booster supplements. There have been several clinical studies on tribulus terrestris and the vast majority of those studies show it does not raise testosterone levels. Tribulus terrestris is a dud. So if your testosterone booster includes tribulus terrestris as the main ingredient, it's probably not going to work. And just as an aside, if you are taking a testosterone booster and you really want to know if it's going to work or not, get your free and total testosterone measured first, then try a supplement for about a month or so, then test your levels of the hormone again a month later. That's the only way to know if a test testosterone supplement is really raising your testosterone. Another supplement ingredient I'm not a fan of is Yohimbi, which incidentally does have some human research behind it. But the reason I don't like Yohimbi is that those same studies show that it appears to raise heart rate and raise blood pressure. So what does that mean for people who have problems with their heart and their blood pressure? Yohimbi sometimes finds its way into pre-workout supplements. And the healthy people that have taken these products have actually told me privately that they don't feel so good if they take too much of that pre-workout. So Yohimbi, not a fan. I don't like raspberry ketones either. Raspberry ketones 
ketones are not ketones in the sense of the ketogenic diet ketones, rather they're marketed as a weight loss supplement. They're molecules in raspberries. I have no faith that raspberry ketones will help people lose weight. I'm not aware of any human clinical trials on raspberry ketones, which is sad because this stuff has been around for a long time. If your weight loss supplement contains raspberry ketones as a key ingredient, it's not going to work. I also don't like weight loss teas. So these teas are all over the place. And when I look at weight loss teas, I find there's the key ingredient in pretty much all of them is senna. Senna is a laxative. So while yeah, you will lose weight when you use these weight loss teas, the weight you lose is going to be water, electrolytes, and fecal matter. The problem with weight loss teas is, well, you're going to lose some weight. It's going to come right back as soon as you start drinking liquids again. And one more tip for you. I'm not a fan of any supplement that contains a proprietary blend. Proprietary blends are very popular in the world of dietary supplements because it does help the companies protect their intellectual property from others. And while I understand why that is so, proprietary blends protect us, the customers, from seeing the actual amounts of each ingredient in the blend. This means we can't tell if the supplement contains a clinically studied dose of those ingredients. By the way, I have investigated supplements for over 30 years, so if you want to set up a time to talk about the supplements you're taking, I'll look at those ingredients, I'll look at the science of those ingredients and the supplements and the companies, and I'll report back to you on what my findings are. If that's something you're interested in, leave a comment below or email me through my websites and let's set up a consult. Let me know in the comments below what supplements you think are bogus, and until next time, take care out there.